So now we'll undo this. And the lens is broken. Look at that. Okay. So you just saw me take this apart and there it is there. It's broken up. Lens. The reason it's broken up is because of, I suppose it's engineering incompetence. Um, now many of you may know or may not know that I lived and worked in China for about six years. Uh, off and on I spent a few months there, a few months back home and so on and so forth. And uh, I know how exactly how they work. And they, <laughs> what they call engineers, are not, unfortunately. Um, I think some of the so-called engineers in China uh, obtain their engineering degree um, maybe in a lucky bag or they buy it they certainly don't earn it or they don't study for it because you know this this is this is quite normal for China and this is why you have to work on these machines. These particular machines are not a bad general design, except many makers or companies that make these um, copy them and they don't use proper engineering staff because they've just made a little recess in there which is not enough to put this in and they clamp this down on this it's not glass by the way this is more of a crystal and it's just flick the outside of the crystal or lens off very very bad engineering this uh, and as you've seen throughout this whole video video series that I'm doing um, there are some things that are very very questionable uh, you know like the the earth for instance you know on painted panels and other things which I you know I sort of haven't filmed um, so, you know, you need to be careful and you need to be prepared to put things right. Uh, this one, this new one, on the other hand, um, has a correct setup. There is a restriction ring there. Okay, and it's got different, uh, you can put different size of lenses in here you can go all the way up to uh, I think 18 millimeter no, three quarters of an inch but that ring you put inside there you put the lens in there and you tighten up and it tightens up on that ring uh, and it is also an o-ring which it squeezes up on that's the correct way of doing it so if you don't do anything else, change this. It's horrible. <laughs> okay. I, you know, I'm quite, you know, I, I, I expect these things. Um, but it sort of not really stopped me in my tracks because I anticipated something like this and I have ordered 
new lenses and mirror set. Uh, unfortunately, they're held up in the post somewhere. Um, so I'm going to continue now with the modifications on this, uh, minus obviously putting a lens in this. All right, so we will continue. One thing you'll find when you do this type of um, modification, especially putting this unit on, is um, it's not a straightforward undo, fit the new one in. Um, well, that's the size of the boss that goes through here. And that's the size of the new boss. So you've got to take the hole out. So what I've done is I've scribed around where it's got to come out. And um, I'm going to use a Dremel to make that hole a little bigger. And it's a very easy job to take out with a, with a Dremel. Just a little bit at a time and uh, just trial fit it every so often. Make sure you don't take out too much. Okay, so this is what I've got so far. I've made a little, little bracket to go on here um, and drilled that as well as uh, made this hole big enough to, to fit this through, which is good. Um, Something else I'm doing too is when I took this plate off, there was no um, washers on top of these posts, uh, and it was a bit of a hit and miss affair. So I'm going to put some uh, little tiny washers, little tiny flat washers, these on the on the tops of each of these posts, and then put the screw in. It's going to be a bit fiddly, but uh, I think I can do it. I've got um, I've got a small flexible cable running, dual core cable running through because I, I've got a a little laser pointer uh, to go on here at some point. Um, so you know I've got to draw up a a three D model in Fusion three sixty and. Um, Put it, you know, get it printed out on my 3D printer. Some of you may be interested in watching that. Um, so I won't be connecting that up today, but um, certainly we'll be connecting this up. But of course, I won't be able to run the the laser because I want. I got. I got to wait for my um, my new lens to come. Okay. So I'm just going to fit this and then I'm going to drill, drill this in, in a point where um, it's going to be nice and tidy. I, I've actually shortened this about, it's about half the length of what I actually bought. I bought about a metre I think and it's about half a metre long. Alright, well I'll just assemble this and uh, bring you back in. Okay, so I've just finished doing these little mods now. This took me... I suppose about 30 minutes by the time I'd sort of uh, taken this out with a Dremel and made this little bracket and drilled it and what have you. Put this on, thread, threaded the pipe. I've actually taken this pipe into the electrical box now and brought it through here. I will get some rubber edging on here, although it's not going to chaff or anything because uh, it's now in this cable chain. And I now I mentioned the cable chain, can you see in the back there, can you see that fan? Um, I had quite a few people saying to me that I was talking, well, rubbish about uh, when I move this or when anybody moves this, it, the, the um, stepper motors act as generators <laughs> and feeds back to the board and can do some harm. Well, I'm going to show you that it is so. Watch that fan. I'm only going to do it very minimal because I don't like doing this too much. That the I'm going to prove to you that the stepper motors do act as generators. This is totally switched off, not even plugged in. Watch. See the fan?
okay? So these step motors do act as generators, right? Uh, luckily enough, the board is dumping whatever power is generated by these back into the power supply, which is being taken out by the fan. So that just proves a point. I mean, I don't like doing that, but that just proves the point that they do act as generators and it can, in certain circumstances, harm the board. But in this case, with this particular board, uh, there does seem to be a protection system on it. So, um, there you go. Anyway, here's the cable track, and wherever you put this in here now, it. See, so you notice? I'm moving it quietly, no back feed. All right? So you can move this around now and make sure that the cable chain is not going to interrupt the the field of view then of the laser in any shape or form. In actual fact it's going to there. I want it tucked back there. So I'm gonna to have to run it, keep an eye on that, because that's stuck out there then and that would interrupt the laser there so I might have to put another screw or a zip tie in there or something just to hold that back but I'm going to see how it goes normal circumstances it should be all right I think I might put a zip tie there just to hold it back anyway we don't have a lens in here, but I'm going to run it anyway. It'll do a nice fat beam of about three or four millimeters. Uh, but actually, it's going to help our cause. It's going to prove a point. You know, it's going to scorch the hell out of the wood. And uh, under normal circumstances, it would burst immediately into flame. So we're going to check to see whether the air assist is working sufficiently and also whether this head is actually working all right. Uh, I just put a piece of tape on here and realigned it up. There's a larger orifice in here, which actually makes it easier. And, um, well, let's have a look. Let's see what it's gonna do. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna start the air assist up and uh, it's fairly quiet. Yeah, nice, nice airflow there. You can probably hear it. That's my hand. Okay, I'm going to start the laser up now. Okay, let's initialize it with the program. I'll move it down a bit. Okay, um... I'll wind the power up to maximum, which in this case is uh, 15 milliamps. I'll just do a test. Yep. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Well, the air assist seems to be doing its job. It's not allowing it to burn into flame at all, and the fan is doing a reasonable job too. Well, uh, unfortunately, um, I, I come to a bit of a grinding halt with this now, until the postman brings me my new lens. Um, but I've, I'm really happy with the outcome. And I hope you are enjoying uh, the videos in doing the upgrades to the K40 laser and actually making it safe. 
and um, it's uh, it's surprising you know just the little upgrades that I'm doing it makes you know world of difference um, like uh, you know I just removed that cowling which is just choking the whole venting system up and it's night and day plus you know they, they've gone some way to make a bit of an improvement that that fan isn't bad actually and i i don't think i'm gonna need to put that um inline extraction fan in so i hope you've enjoyed the video as far as we got anyway with the, the modifications i th think you can see where i'm going with it and um you know i, I don't know when the, the lens is going to arrive but as soon as it does we'll put it in and we'll see what it'll do I'm not expecting any problems not expecting you know any dramas whatsoever uh, I think it's just going to be a, a, a quite a nice little 40 watt unit um, something I did notice actually that uh, I printed on the laser tube it says that um, the maximum output's been tested at 40 watts, but the agreed maximum output is 38 watts. So this is a K38 laser, but okay, it's, that's all right. You know, you expect these things. Manufacturers sell on the peak output. This is a classic example. Okay. Um... I wasn't actually going to to divulge this bit of information um, but uh, in, in about two weeks I was going to start a new series running alongside this one actually and uh, that is that uh, yesterday I took a deliver that is yesterday I took a delivery of a 30 watt Rakus fiber laser. So we're going to be able to engrave um, metals, even gold. But I don't think I'm going to be engraving much gold. Maybe a bit of silver. But um, brass, copper, aluminium, steel, even tool steel. It'll <laughs> it'll make a medallion out of tool steel if you want to. And I'm going to show you how to do all that, uh, you know, even, you know, the, just simple, uh, you know, marking, what they call marking in the industry, uh, which is, you know, just lettering or numbering on items, you know, or designs, uh, you know, on metal items or plastic items. Um, so I hope you'll uh, join me for that series. And... Um, in actual fact, I think uh, the next video after this one, I'll do a very short promo for the fiber laser. So, um, if you've liked this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget, if you would like to become a patron, uh, information for uh, patrons is below this video in the video description area. Because it's the patrons behind this channel, that allow me to keep going and without them I probably couldn't <laughs> so um, thank you for joining me and I hope you pop in for the next video and uh, indeed the next series that I'm going to run in parallel with this one so uh, it's uh, bye for now